Hey there, in this video we are going to dig more into linear functions and what slope and y-intercept um, mean and how we can calculate them from different given pieces of information. So as a reminder, a linear function can be written in the format y equals mx plus b. m is going to represent your slope and b is going to represent your y-intercept. So slope is a measure of how steep the line is. So if you think about a hill, and while a hill, you typically, when you draw a hill as a kid, for example, you probably draw something like this. If we just focus on this part of the hill or this part of the hill and think about it as a linear piece um, and not curved, that can help us to understand what slope is. So a positive slope is going to be going up from left to right, like this portion of my hill. A negative slope is going to be going down from left to right, like this portion of my hill. So you can see that with these two examples right here. Now, um, slope is considered the ratio of the rise, which is the change in the y value, to the run, which is the change in x. And we use the words rise and run because that's a little more common knowledge. If you think about rise, rise is going to be your up or your down. Now, we usually think rise is going up, but technically it can't go down if it is negative. If the number is negative for the rise, then that is going to be uh, going down. And it's a ratio of that rise to that run, which is the left to the right going left or right, depending, again, if it's a positive or negative number. But it's a ratio, so it's usually written as a fraction with our rise on top and our run on the bottom, which we'll get into in a minute. Now, there are two special cases of types of slope. The first one is a slope of zero. So if we have a horizontal line, that is going to be a slope of zero. If you think about that, again, in the concept of a hill, if it does not rise, it doesn't go up or down, it is not a hill. It has no slope, it has no increase or decrease, um, it's not going up or down. And then finally, undefined slope, this is actually not a function. So that is not considered a linear function. It is a line, it is a straight line, it goes up and down, it's a vertical line. But it is not actually a function because every single point on this line actually has the same x value and that same x value, whatever it may be, is mapped to a whole bunch of different y values. For example, negative 1, 0, 1, so on and so on. So what that tells us is while it's not a function, it is an answer to a type of slope. So undefined is the slope of any vertical line. So now let's talk about how we find slope from a graph. So we're going to pick two points on the graph, and you'll see in these examples that I have two uh, points already picked for you. You can pick any two points you would like um, if it's not already given to you, but I would suggest that you do points that are on the corners of um, the grid lines of the coordinate plane. So for example, here I picked two points that are on the corners. Um, if you wanted to, you could have picked, for example, this point is on the corner and this point. I could have picked those two. It does not matter. But you'll find that um, if you can get them closer together, it usually helps you in terms of what you have to simplify in the end. So pick two points. We have that done on number one. Step two, starting at one of the two points, doesn't matter which one, you're going to count the rise, which is your up or your down, and the run, which is your left or your right. So let's talk about rise and let's talk about run. So your rise, um, if I pick this point right here, let's say, our rise, we are going up in order to get to that other point. We're going to have to climb up one. That is our rise. It is a positive one because we are going up. And then our run would be how many do we go left or right, in this case right. And that's going to be right two. And because it's right, it is positive. So again, up is positive and right is positive. If we went down, that would be negative and left would be negative. So our run on this one is two. So our rise over our run is going to be one over two. So one half is our slope of this line. Now, if you had picked the other point, you could go for your rise, it would be going down one, which would be a negative one. And then our run would be backwards or left two, 
which would be negative two. So if we had negative one over negative two, notice that would still come out to be positive because a negative divided by negative is a positive. So that would still come out to be one half. So I wanted to point out, even if you picked a different way to get there for your rise and your run, um, you are still going to get the same answer if you do it correctly. Same thing goes if I had picked this point and this point. I would just be doing a lot more counting. So rise one, two, three, four, and then run one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But four over eight still simplifies to one half. So no matter which two points I pick on that line, they will simplify to the same um, fraction once you've simplified it, as long as you write your rise over your run correctly. So on number two, technically you can follow the same steps, but you'll notice if it's a horizontal line, like we talked about on the last page, zero is going to be your slope. So here our slope is zero, but if you wanted to count your rise or your run, if you pick two points on that line, any two points, you'll notice we do not rise. So our rise is zero because we don't go up or down to get to the other point. We just run one or if you had looked at it the opposite direction, negative one. Either way, you would have zero over one or zero over negative one or zero over whatever number between um, the points, whatever two points you pick. Zero over one is zero. So again, you can memorize that a horizontal line is always gonna have a slope of zero, or you can calculate it using that same process of the rise over the run. So looking at two more examples of this, number three, I picked two points for you. So you can see um, this one, I spread them out a little bit more, but if you count your rise and your run, it does not matter again, which point you start at. I'm gonna start at this one this time and work my way up two. So my rise is positive two, but then I have to go left two, which is going to be a negative because I'm going to the left. So that's negative two. My rise is two, my run is negative two. And then we have to simplify that. Two divided by two is one and two divided by negative two, that means that is negative one. So our slope on this one is negative one. It would have saved us a little bit if we picked points closer together. So for example, if I picked this point and this point, I would go up one and left one. So that would be one over negative one, which still simplifies to negative one. Any points you pick on this are going to simplify to negative one when you divide. And then on number four, again, this is one that you can memorize um, or you can technically set up your rise over your run. So if you think about any two points, and I didn't draw any on this one, but if I pick this point and this point, your rise, let's say I go from the bottom one up, is one. Your run is zero. We don't go left or right at all. One divided by zero. Remember, you cannot divide by zero. So that means our slope is undefined because when we divide by zero, we get undefined. And so that tells us um, anytime we have a vertical line, it will be undefined as our slope. We can also find slope from two given coordinate points or ordered pairs, um, even if we don't have a graph. So this is our slope formula. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And that is basically just saying that if we have two ordered pairs, and we have one of them is called x1, y1, and the other one is called x2, y2. So just two ordered pairs. We use the ones and the twos to indicate they um, come from the first ordered pair or they come from the second ordered pair. But technically it doesn't matter um, which ordered pair has the ones and which one has the twos, as long as the ones are together in the same ordered pair and the twos are together in the same ordered pair. So, um, Looking at this example here, 0, 5, and 2, 15, if I call this x1, y1, and x2, y2, I can go ahead and use my um, formula for slope, and I can do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 by taking the 15, y2, minus y1, which is 5, all over y2, I'm sorry, x2 minus x1, which is 2 minus 0. Now, I do want to point something out. Because I started with the 15, y2 in this case, and I subtracted y1, 
I have to start with that same ordered pair when I go to the x's to subtract those. So 2, I'm going to subtract 0 from that. So you always have to start with the same ordered pair. So if I started with 15 minus 5, I couldn't have done 0 minus 2 on the bottom. It will not work out to be correct. Um, your signs will be incorrect and potentially your numbers as well. So 15 minus 5, 15 minus 5 is 10 over 2 minus 0, which is 2. And then we can go ahead and divide. 10 divided by 2 is 5. So our slope on this one is 5. On number 2, so again, I'm going to go ahead and call this x1 and y1 and x2 and y2. But technically, you could have flip-flopped these and make these 2s and these 1s. And you're still going to come out with the same answer. Um, you will just have slightly different work to get there. So for our slope, we're going to do y2 minus y1 and x2 minus x1. So that's negative 12 minus negative 12. And notice it is a double negative. I have to write that or switch it into a positive if you see that. But we can't just make it negative 12 minus 12. And then on the bottom, again, we follow that same pattern. So we have negative 5 and we're subtracting negative 6. So negative 5 minus negative 6. When we have a double negative, remember that turns into a plus. So on top, we really have negative 12 plus 12. On bottom, we have negative 5 plus 6. So notice I'm separating um, the top and the bottom still. I'm simplifying those separately. So on top, negative 12 plus 12 is 0. On bottom, negative 5 plus 6 is 1. And 0 divided by 1 is just 0. So our slope of this one is 0. So now let's talk about what the y-intercept of a line is. So when we are looking at a line that's already graphed, to figure out the y-intercept, you're going to look at the point where it crosses the y-axis. So this point right here is your y-intercept. And um, since the x-coordinate of any point on the y-axis is always going to be 0. 0 comma y will be your um, ordered pair for any y-intercept. So any y-intercept will always have an x value of 0 because no matter what point I pick on this y-axis, the if I were to write the ordered pair, the x-coordinate is 0 and then the y-coordinate is whatever number it's sitting at on the y-axis. So just keep that in mind, 0 comma y is always the format for any y-intercept. And we will often use b, so you might see 0 comma b as well. That is um, what we use from y equals mx plus b to represent that y-intercept. So in this case, this point right here, um, in our example here, erase my other points. So that one right there, that y-intercept of this line is at 0, negative 1 for my ordered pair. So now looking back at the same graphs that we already found the slope of previously, let's talk really quickly about our y-intercept for each of those graphs. So we already talked about the steepness of the line. Um, remember that when we talked about slope, when it was a positive slope, it went up from left to right. When it was a negative slope, it went down from left to right. A slope of zero was a horizontal line and an undefined slope was up and down. Now we're not going to worry about the slope. Now we're going to talk about the y-intercept. So we're going to look for the point that crosses the y-axis. So if you think about the y-axis as this vertical axis right here, you want to find the point where that blue line, in this case, crosses that y-axis. So in this case, that is this point right here, which is the origin in this case, which is 0, 0. Now on number 6, again, we want to look if you highlight the y-axis, we want to look for the point um, where our blue line crosses the y-axis, which would be this point right here. So if we start at our origin, we go left or right, nothing. We don't move left or right. We just go straight from that origin right here. We go straight down one, which means that our um, ordered pair for this one is going to be 0, comma, negative 1, just like the example that we had on the last page, but just a different line. So it's possible for different lines to have the same y-intercept. I might draw in a linear um, graph right here that goes through that same point. So keep that in mind. The y-intercept is not specific to only one possible graph. 
All right, and then number seven here, we see the point where the graph crosses the y-axis is this one here. If this was our origin, we go down one, two, three. So that's at negative three. Remember, it's always written zero comma and then whatever that number is. So zero comma negative three is our ordered pair there. Now this one is a special case. So if you look at your y-axis, this blue line does not and will never cross that y-axis. So there is actually no y-intercept on this graph. So that is possible for it to have no y-intercept. So just as a quick reminder, slope, remember slope is telling us how steep the line is. So we'll talk more in the future about um, what makes it steeper, what makes it um, less steep. And then um, one thing I did want to point out, positive slopes, remember, go up from left to right. Negative slopes go down from left to right. If we have a horizontal line, it is a slope of zero. And if we have a vertical line, it is an undefined slope. Y-intercept, remember that the y-intercept is the point that crosses the y-axis on your line. So if this is my line and this is the point um, that crosses the y-axis, we'll say at negative two, then my y-intercept would be at zero comma negative two. And remember it is always zero comma y or zero comma b for that y-intercept.